Sak passe, y'all. My name's Christy. For those of you who are new, I am 34 years old. I'm a mom and I work a full-time job and I just started my little journey of trying to start my own small business selling stationary items and my artwork. So I wanted to make this video to basically talk about everything that I have done so far up to this point where I'm actually launching the shop now, finally. So this all started in July when I made that video announcing that I wanted a change in my life. I've been doing everything to get this business started and I wanted to share all those little things that I've done with you. And just so you guys know, especially the people who normally watch me, I'm not gonna ramble off too much. I have notes this time. I'm going to be more prepared to discuss this and offer as much as I can uh, based off my experience because I know there are a few people that are also starting their journey with their small business, whether it's art or other types of small business adventures. Let's get to it because I'm going to start rambling. As you guys know, I started back in July. It is now September and I'm launching Friday, September 27th. My store will be live for everybody to start purchasing their zodiac signs and all the little cute stuff that I have on there on Friday morning. It'll be it'll be live. So, I went through so many trial and errors, y'all. You don't even know. I recorded all of it. It is all documented. You can go back to my YouTube videos and see the struggles that I went through. It's not like as simple as my mind made it up to be initially. <laughs> Obviously, when you're actually doing something you say you're going to do, there's always going to be challenges that you don't expect. Yes, this is the most rewarding thing I've ever done, but also has been one of the most challenging things I've ever done. It's worth it to me regardless of the outcome because I proved to myself that I could do this. So now that I got that out of the way, the first thing that I did when I was starting my little art business is I started with an idea, a theme. I started thinking about what I wanted to offer. I wanted to provide some kind of value with my products. I didn't want to just say, hey, buy my artwork. I want there to be some kind of value for everybody and i and i'm always like the type of person that loves like zodiac signs i love the galaxy i love celestial things sparkles stars that's always been me and so i figured that is going to be my theme that's going to be illustrating christy that was the theme that i wanted to go with i will say it's really good to start this way because you could get really overwhelmed trying to produce so much and not have a clear vision of, as to what you want to offer and what the value is really going to be for the people buying it and i also think it's important to think about why you want to open the shop not only think about a theme and what kind of products you want to offer but why are you doing it and that's why in that first video where I announced that I was going to start this, I talked about why I talked about how this was going to affect me and how there are things surrounding me that influence this decision. And it's important to acknowledge that and not to just say, I'm doing this because I need money, <laughs> because if you do it just for money, I don't know. It just doesn't money can be a big motivator. Yes. but. I feel like I, th I myself thrive from having other big motivators like I'm doing this for my son and my husband, a better lifestyle where I'm home with them more instead of stuck at work because of my environment at work. And I love art. I love sitting down and drawing. The entire process of starting this business, I absolutely loved. I loved everything about what I was doing. Yes, there were challenges, but I really enjoyed the opportunity to start my own art business. Like to think that I even made it this far, it, it just baffles me half the time. Really, really, really dig deep and think about why this is important to you. Why are you doing this? Okay, so that brings me to my second point. Now that you have come up with an idea for the site and you 
you know what you're providing, it's time to draft it and to make samples, which is the second thing that I did. So once I, I started thinking about some of the products I wanted, I started to make them. So I, I made uh, my bookmarks and my art prints and some stickers. And, and I'm saying this because it's good to start making samples of the things that you want to offer because, for example, I originally also wanted to make my own sparkle paint. <laughs> it's kind of like glitter paint really, but I was going to call it sparkle paint. And it failed miserably, which is why I decided to play around with the idea initially while I was drafting and making samples and stuff like that. I played around with the idea of having sparkle paint. But then when I realized the cost it was, the upfront cost and materials I was going to need and then figuring out how I was going to ship it, I realized this is not feasible for somebody who just wants a simple launch. Like I have a full-time job, guys, okay? I have a full-time job and I have a baby. He's a toddler. There is not enough time for me to try to develop what I was trying to develop and the timeline that I was giving myself. So it was good that I played around with the idea when I was drafting out my my products that I was gonna launch. It's good that I played around with it and recognized that it was not possible for me at this time to do that. So that's why I recommend to make samples of things that you think that you want in your shop. If you're happy with it, then run with it. If you're feeling like it was exhausting or you felt overwhelmed doing it, I recommend holding off and have it as a future product. And that's something that you can offer to customers on a special launch one day um, when you have more time. But do not overwhelm yourself on your first launch. It will be so awful. Like the feeling of over exerting yourself will come a lot quicker than you can imagine. And I have been there. <laughs> highly recommend try out some things and if it doesn't work just set it aside it does not have to be a big deal nobody even knows yet at this point what it is that you're going to offer and if you're not making these things at home like i am you can also get proofs from other manufacturers so make sure that you get proofs and check out other manufacturers and just try different things until you have a line of products that you're very comfortable with. Okay, so the next thing is, in regards to my last point, is share your products with your friends and family that you are close with. Don't shout it out to the world just yet because you want to like get an idea of what they feel or their opinion. If it matters to you, that is. like That's what I did. I ended up having my sister and my husband sister-in-law and a couple friends take a look at my my line of products that i wanted to offer i sent items out to them as well and i shared it with them so that i could get their feedback and i asked you know what do you think of the color what do you think of the size what do you think of this feature you know etc and just get little feedback here and there and make the changes that you need to make that way when you do start producing some of the work you feel very confident that the majority would like the product or appreciate the product or find value out of what you're offering. Okay, once you feel comfortable with what you're going to launch, that's when you would bring it to your community. So that's what I did. As soon as I got the feedback that I needed and I made the changes that I made, that's when I was ready to share it with my community. I've already had a small community on Instagram and on Twitch because I do stream on Twitch. So I have a Discord from my Twitch community and Instagram where I could share some of my ideas and things like that. I brought up what I had planned to launch when I decided to launch my shop. And it was also to bring some awareness, like I wanted them to know something big is coming. Here's a sneak peek. Um, I'm working on this project. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Things like that. If you just kind of like put it out there, then the anticipation kind of starts and then people are starting to look forward to seeing what you're working on and want to know when the shop is going to launch, etc. So I, I 
felt like that was an important step because I didn't want to leave my community in the dark and then suddenly blindside them with, hey, by the way, I have this shop I want you guys to check out. So I really recommend talking to the people who follow you and just kind of give them sneak peeks here and there and talk about this new launch that's coming up, even though you don't have a set date because I, I didn't have a set date until like last week. <laughs> So I've been working on this since July. So the next thing that I did, I decided to start a spreadsheet to jot down all the items that I'm offering and the prices for each one. This is super important because this is what intimidated me in the beginning. I didn't know how to price my products and I worry of overpricing and then I worried underpricing and I never knew what was right for me. And overanalyzing that set me back so much. And then I just finally decided that I'm going to take it one day at a time. So I'm going to use multiple references, right? So I'm, I looked at other artists and what they were offering when they had similar products. And I picked like three or four of them. With that, I was able to basically decide, okay, what's a nice middle ground of a price to be able to offer to my customers and so that's how i came up with my prices and i wanted to be not necessarily competitive but as a new person in this industry i wanted to be a little bit cheaper because i don't know what challenges i'm going to face that they are able to overcome quicker than i can and i don't want to price my items when I don't have that level of confidence yet. <laughs> so please do research. Don't feel overwhelmed by the idea of pricing your items. There are many people who are probably making something similar and you can base your prices off of what they're doing. But I really recommend looking at multiple people, not just one, especially based off the sizes or the weight or whatever. Definitely decide if you're going to make your products at home or if you're gonna use a manufacturer. I had decided initially that I wanted to use a manufacturer, but then I realized the upfront cost was way, way too much. And there was no guarantee that anybody was going to buy my products. And so I decided I'm just gonna make these at home. So I got myself an Epson printer that I really love. It's been working really well. Um, the colors are amazing on it. And so I print all my art prints on there, all my thank you cards on there, all my bookmarks on there, all my stickers on there. So that's constant printing. And I'm still way above the half level of the ink. So I am amazed by this printer. I am not kidding. I highly, highly recommend the Epson printer. I'll link it in my description box as well. I finally decided I'm gonna make my items at home and I'll have a manufacturer make my business cards instead because I was not about to print and cut all these little cards. That was too much work. I just decided I'll just I'll just have that done. And that's not too much. I think business cards are typically what 30 bucks for a hundred or fifty. I can't remember how much I ordered. The next thing that I did was I tried different shipping materials. I was looking at shipping items on Amazon. I used Amazon pretty much for every material that I'm gonna need for this small business. Um, so I got all my shipping items there. I tried different ones and I ran some tests. So I would buy bubble mailers and regular mail envelopes as well. And I would put my products in there and figure out how I want to wrap them up and everything like that, put them in there. And then I sent them out to a few people and I got feedback from that. So I I recommend doing that as well because then you don't find yourself changing the type of shipping material in the middle of a launch. It sounds kind of crazy because you do have to spend money doing this. Luckily, a lot of the shipping materials are pretty affordable. I have the plastic bag that you put the art prints in. It was like I think $8 for like a hundred of them. But yes, I definitely recommend running some tests um, mail things out to people that you trust, get their opinion. You want to do an entire like pretend order and see what it's like packaging it, putting it in the mail. Is it convenient? Is it taking too much time? Um, is it slowing down production? You know, things like that. Experiment as much as you can before you start your shop 
launch. Okay, so this is a big one. The next thing that I did was I finally decided to separate my finances. I did not want to have my personal bank account to have like all the purchases that I did for the shop. And if I make money from the shop, I didn't want it mixing with my, my salary that I get from work and things like that. I think it will be too confusing come tax season. So I luckily already had a second bank account, so I'm separating them that way. I think it's gonna help a lot, especially when I do have to pull records of everything that I've purchased when tax season comes. So everything that I purchased for the business is all going from one card. I have this credit card with this bank and I use that to buy everything for my business. Please pay off your cards, okay? Don't go off and get a card just because I said so. <laughs> But getting the credit card really helped me and at the end of the month, I always paid it off. So that's super important. I can track every transaction that I have done with this card throughout the year. And then if I get paid or when I get paid, I should say, from the shop, then I can say this is how much I made because I know for a fact because I'm looking at it in this one account that I have because that's all that would be going in this account. So I wanted to keep that separate from what I get from my full-time job and and what I take out from normal day-to-day -day things like groceries and I don't know, just buying random stuff on Amazon because <laughs> there's a deal. But um, yeah, I, I needed to keep it separate. So I, I highly recommend doing that. It'll make your life so much easier. Okay, this next thing that I did is completely optional. Nobody really has to do this, but I felt more comfortable doing it and that is getting an LLC. I did end up getting an LLC recently. So now it's Illustrating Christie LLC, I guess. <laughs> My reason for that is because I felt like if anything, anything were to happen and I get sued, not that I expect to, but if I, if for some reason along the line, I get sued for something, they're suing the business. They're not suing my name, like me, my, and they're not trying to take my assets. They're taking the company assets. At least that's how I understood it when I was looking into getting an LLC versus a, I think it's called sole proprietor. If you want more information on getting an LLC, I am not that person. <laughs> I recommend getting an accountant or talking to one. They or getting legal advice from somebody who is licensed to do that. Um, but from the research that I did, I felt like it was appropriate for me to get the LLC. And so that's why that was one of the steps that I included in there as what I did to start my, my business. The next thing that I did was I made a decision to create my website instead of launching on Etsy or Ko-fi. As you guys know, I do use Ko-fi a lot, but now I'm keeping Ko-fi as only digital downloads because I do make digital wallpapers and I have my memberships on there, which is similar to like Patreon. If you're not aware on Ko-fi, I do have memberships kind of like Patreon and you can choose different tiers there's three different tiers i've already sent out the mail for the star members for the purple tier i really had fun doing that that was my first time so i sent that out if you still want to get star mail for september feel free to join now i'll send out the mail before october i am getting ready to work on the artwork for the october mail that i'm going to send out to the star members i wanted to have a website because it looked a lot more professional to me and as somebody who's launching for the first time i wanted to make a good impression i guess <laughs> like i wanted to present my work my hard 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 work and a manner where like it looks like me it looks like my personality it feels like me and the only way i could have done that is by creating the website myself and so i use shopify uh i am not sponsored <laughs> but i use shopify and i'm really glad that i did i love the way the website looks you can go there now and during this week you can't really see anything other than the sign up page because um, the shop is locked up until friday 
but you can sign up so you can get updates on when the shop opens up and other updates that I'm going to be sending out. This is completely optional. You don't have to create a website. Um, it does cost money. However, Shopify does have the option, like they have a promotion where you can uh, start with them for a dollar for that month, which I was comfortable doing just to see and test the waters. But I really wanted to launch my shop on Shopify. I felt like having my own website was the only way to have the the look and feel that I was looking for to launch my shop and make it fun and cute. It just matches the theme and I just absolutely love my website right now. <laughs> okay, so next up is to, oh my gosh, this part was hard for me, but decide your shipping costs. So when I was making the website, I had there's a section in Shopify where you choose how you want the shipping to be. And so shipping, honestly, locally, like in the US, easy. I decided I wanted to have tracking for every order for peace of mind, not just for me, but for the customer. I feel like if I was ordering somewhere, I would always like have tracking. Like it makes me feel good to know where my package is, like if it's coming and if it was already delivered. I absolutely love that about Amazon and I want to have that on my website like when you purchase something. That's what I did for people in the US. Now internationally, that's where it became really difficult for me because I wanted to offer tracking. The, it didn't matter what I did or I was looking for a way to make this cheap and I couldn't. There was just no way. It's like $30 or $40 for people to have tracking and i'm like that is ridiculous i cannot believe how expensive it is to send things to another country and so i decided to have that as an optional feature for them if they wanted at checkout then i added a feature where you can do no tracking and it's just like three bucks that's what i opted to do so international they can choose tracking or they can choose no tracking and to keep the cost really low for them because it is an overwhelming amount of money to send items internationally tracked. So I feel so bad and that scares me because I want to know that your package made it safe. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know you're okay. Okay, so next thing is to market on your socials. That's what I did. I've been doing that for the last, I think, three weeks now. I've been marketing that I have a shop launch coming soon. What I mean by marketing is basically just show you working on some of the products or do a little reveal here and there and just kind of like give people more of a glimpse and just keep showing them that something's coming, something's coming. It was only recently that I finally gave a date that I'm launching a shop and um, I showed more of the Boba Tea Zodiac artwork. I like to post all my stuff on social media because I want people to be more aware that my shop is opening up soon and I don't want them to forget because I, I may have talked about it once and then it's like completely like nobody remembers. So I did it every week. I reminded everyone every week that I'm going to be launching a product. Here it is and here's this one and here's this one. I would do a different one each week. But yeah, definitely market your work. Let people know. Uh, make reels. Make YouTube videos like I'm doing or I've been doing that really help boost um, the engagement that I've gotten about my shop launch. I think making the YouTube videos and posting a lot on Instagram and TikTok, it really helped make me feel like there were people who actually want to buy my products because I would get really great comments and feedback from everybody. So start marketing weeks before your shop launch. That way people can anticipate and add it to their calendar, add reminders, look forward to your shop launch. Uh, I really think that's really important. And the last thing is to launch and that's exactly what I'll be doing on Friday. I'm so excited. So stay tuned, September 27th, my products will be live for everyone to purchase. It's going to be my first time ever doing this and I'm just so excited, so nervous, so scared and it's just a wave of emotions and I can't wait to like pack the orders. I have some coworkers and friends that are ready to like 
hit the button just waiting for it to go live so i'm ready to like start packaging everything i'll record when i package them as well i'm really happy that i did this this was like honestly a dream come true i know nothing has really like happened yet because i didn't the shop isn't live but it was a lot of work and i'm really glad that i i did that you know i i never would have seen myself doing this as someone as busy as i am like having a full-time job and being a mom and being a wife also and just having so many responsibilities in life you never think that you can do more than just that and i managed to and i just feel really really good about this i highly recommend anybody that is starting their own business to be patient with yourself there's going to be challenges but please be patient with yourself i can be very impatient so that really <laughs> that really can hurt me love what you do and just enjoy the process because you're worth it you are absolutely worth it so please remember that i also wanted to give a big shout out to lady conscience thank you so much for these beautiful earrings they're so pretty lady conscience also just launched their small art business if you guys want to check out her beautiful products, they're on Ko-fi. I'll link it here for you guys. Absolutely beautiful work, girl. I love, love, love your stuff. Thank you so much for these earrings. And I can't wait to check out your other stuff. So I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm looking forward to the shop launch. I hope you are too. I'm so excited. I can't believe this is happening. But yes, I'm going to sign off. It's already getting late. I started when it was bright out. Well, kind of bright, but already dark in this room so i'm gonna head out maybe cuddle with my hubby ben and finally rest because i have been going at this non-stop and now that i finally finished i can woosah and just like coast a little bit and then when the shop launches i'll be back in here working my butt off day and night after work um and just getting it done so I appreciate all of you. I love you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a little star in the comments or let me know what made you smile today. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.